Hi, it's Eric from Team 6637, the Beta Wolves. Today is a part three in our series on coding a drivable robot with VS Code and Java. We're going to jump right in. Um, we're going to go over subsystems today. Yesterday we went over a robot, uh, robot map file that has constants. And again, constants are something that doesn't change as a result of your code. Um, the only reason a constant might change is, uh, you know, you physically change the port that a wire is plugged into or you change hardware and it has a different um, you know a different setting you might want to put that into your robot map file uh, but we just used it to keep track of some ports um, the OI file is uh, our operator input where we um, keep track of um, like joystick buttons and uh, things of that nature um, but our subsystem uh, you notice that this uh, the basic command based uh, pr robot project came with an example subsystem. We don't really need that. I'm going to create a new class command and say subsystem and I'm going to name this drive subsystem. Since it's a class, capitalize the first letter. And then we always like to put the word subsystem at the end. Or if it's a command, we put command at the end. If it's command group, we put command group at the end. Just so when you're uh, eyeballing your code, you kind of can see what's what. I'm going to hit enter, it creates it, and I'm going to open it up. And uh, just to be clear on what a subsystem is, it's a, um, it's a representation in code of a major component on your robot. So if you had a shooter, you'd make a subsystem for a shooter, and then you can um, define your hardware in code, and you can make methods so that commands can manipulate that subsystem. Um, there's by default an init default command method in here where we can set a default command and that's a command that'll always run um, if nothing else is running and if you command put another command to control a subsystem and that command ends it'll go back to the default um, we're going to comment that out at the moment so in a subsystem the most basic things would be um, or in a drive subsystem you've got your motors uh, so you want to create um, a way to control your motor controllers. So we're going to use some classes and we're going to instantiate those to variables and we'll be able to use those variables which will then represent our motor controllers to control the robot. Uh, and then you might also have a gyro, you might have an encoder, um, things of that nature. Um, so uh, let's jump right in with our motor controllers. I'm going to name this public because we want to use it outside of this class. I'm going to use the WPI Talon SRX class because I'm using I, we have Talon SRXs. We have two plugged in to each side, um, I'm, and I'm going to name it um, a left master. Make it equal a new instantiation of WPI Talon SRX. It wants a device number that would be like its port number and we know the port number already it's in robot map dot and then we set these up earlier our left master port would equal one uh, and that's what we want to put in here and that's why we set that up in our robot map so that we can use this variable throughout the site by using dot syntax to drill into the robot map and then grab that value and plug it into right here now particularly this format, the structure of what we just did to assign a class to a variable is something we've done a few times and you're going to do it over and over in this code. Notice in the OI file we had a class called joystick. We named it stick and made a new instantiation of the joystick. Same thing here. We have WPI Talon SRX. We named it left master and we made a new instantiation of that. So. Um, the first time you look at what this looks like, it might be confusing, but don't let it confuse you. Do it over and over again. Public. WPI Talon SRX. Left slave equals new WPI Talon SRX. And we're going to put robot map. I love hitting the dot. Boop. Oh, didn't work. Robot map. Boop. Left slave port. Why is one called a master and the other called a slave? Well, I do that with talons because talons have this nice method called follow. Um, I can make the slave follow the master. 
And then anything I do to the master will happen to the slave. It simplifies the code. We'll be doing that in just a se second. Public WPI talent SRX write master equals, mm, equals, mm, equals new WPI talent SRX left mask right right master port and we have our right slave and our right slave port okay so now we've created variables that represent our uh, motor controllers if you have a spark motor controller you wouldn't put WPI talent SRX, you would put the word spark here. And you see there's there's a, a class for that. Um, I'm not sure what else you might use, but there would be a class for most motor controllers that are in FRC. So now we have to use something called uh, differential drive. Um, well, you know what? Let me show you before I get confused here in this lesson, I wanna go jump over to um, betawolves.org slash resources, and there's a Google Doc lesson, and I've been following this lesson. Um, so far, we went over the OI, the robot map. Um, we're going to jump into the robot file in a second, but down in drive subsystem, um, there's this commented out code, and I use that to help guide me when I'm coding um, and teaching this lesson. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste that right here and we already instantiated a new motor controller object so I'm going to put that above and the next thing we need to do and again these are just a guide for me to teach by and if you're doing this as a lesson you might want to use that Google Doc start over with a fresh version of this project and just go through that Google Doc and if you're a mentor you might want to teach from that if you're a student you can follow it with your eyeballs and um, try to work your way through that until you can do this without any kind of reference. I'm finally at that point. I can code this in my sleep, um, which is nice. But I not only code it, I understand it, which is even nicer. It's not just good to have knowledge. It's super important to have understanding. Um, so I'm going to instantiate a new differential drive object, um, just like we've done it in the past, public. We're saying public so it can be used outside of this class. Differential drive. I'm going to name it drive equals, you guessed it, new differential drive. And differential drive is looking for a left motor and a right motor. My, I'll pass it my left master and my right master. Okay. And differential drive is something that WPI lib created. And it's a class that gives us a ton of cheater code. We don't have to um, we don't have to program much. We just have to know what our motor controllers are. We have to give different differential drive our motor controllers like we just did. And then there's a bunch of useful things that we can use to make the robot drive. Um, and you'll see that in just a few moments. Assign motor controllers to differential drive. We did that create a constructor function so that we can point our slaves to our master. And I'll do that right now. Now a constructor function, um, when you create a class, sometimes a class has a constructor function. So that's just a special function. It's named the same thing as the class and it's used to pass arguments into a class. So when you create a new class, you might want to give it a couple values up front. You can use a constructor function to do that. Uh, we're not really going to be doing that in this um, in this tutorial. But another thing, um, sometimes code has to be in the constructor function. So I like to pay attention when I'm um, looking at code online and I look specifically to see if it's not only in a class but inside of a um, function that's named the same thing as the class. And then I take, uh, take care to do that in my code and make sure I put it in a constructor function as well if I'm grabbing bits from here and there. Sometimes when you're slinging code around, uh, it can be a wild time, let me tell you. But you just have to pay attention. Um, so I'm going to make a constructor function by saying public drive subsystem, open close parentheses, and then my open and close curly braces. That's all we really need to do here. I'm going to paste this little note to myself in. 
and tab a couple times. I'm going to point my slaves at my masters now. So I'm going to say left slave dot follow left master. So here I'm saying no matter what you do to left master, make left slave follow that. So now we only have to worry about left master. We don't have to worry about left slave anymore. Left slave is going to take care of itself. In a similar vein, right slave dot follow right master. And where does this dot follow come from? Well, dot follow is part of the WPI Talon SRX. So we're using dot syntax to dig into this motor controller, this right slave. Um, and since it's an instantiation of this WPI Talon SRX command or class, we have access to all the code, all the methods that are inside there to manipulate this motor controller. So it's really nice, really useful. We don't have to code a lot. We just have to use the code. Um, the next thing we want to do down here, and the last thing we want to do really, is add a method for driving and or a method yeah, for, for pretty much manually driving this 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 drive subsystem. So you're going to create methods in a in a in a subsystem so that commands can manipulate the subsystem. We want to make it easy. We want to make a method, and then inside that method, we can put all our math and our calls to different um, motors and different things all in one spot. It makes it really handy. I'm not going to drive it. Call it tele up drive. I'm going to call it manual drive. So I'm going to add my manual drive method. So I say public. Um, it's going to be void because we're not returning a value. Manual drive. And when I do a manual drive, which is I'm driving up with and down with the stick and moving left and right, um, I need to know a few things. When a command is uh, managing this, it's going to grab the values of this stick and pass it to the subsystem and say, hey, subsystem, I'm going forward, I'm going left. So you need to pass through a couple values. So to do that, we're going to pass them as arguments. So I could say um, move and turn, OK? Move would be the values on the y-axis, up and down, and turn would be the values on the left and right axis. I'm sorry, yeah, the x-axis, which is left and right. Okay, move and turn. Uh, first we would give it move, and we can't just put move and turn. We can't just make these variables up here. Java doesn't like that. Java likes you to be extremely verbose, right? You have to tell it what to do and what it is in every single instance. Um, so I have to tell Java what move is. It's not an int. It could be an int. Uh, that would be a whole number like one, two, three. But we want to track values between negative one and one. So there's going to be decimals. So I'm going to call it a double. And turn likewise would be a double. So when I call manual drive from a command, I'm going to give it two values. I'm going to give it the move value and the turn value, which are the x and y axes on, on that joystick. And then with those values, I'm going to pass it to the drive um, object that we created up here, which is an instantiation of this differential drive class. Drive has all this stuff inside of it. Because we're using differential drive, we have access to all of this stuff. And it's wonderful. But all we really need is the very first thing, arcade drive. Um, we want to pass it a speed and rotation. That's what we're using here. We're just calling it move and turn. So I'm going to paste that right in there. And done. Done, right? Great. But you might wonder, why don't we just put this in the command? like? I could say, if I was in a command, um, I could say robot.drivesubsystem.drive, right? Because I'd go to the robot and then dig down to the drive subsystem. And then I, with dot syntax, I'd have access to all of these different things, including this drive variable. And then I could say robot.drivesubsystem.drive.arcade drive. I could do that from a command. But 
what if I wanted to manipulate those values a little bit and I wanted it to be manipulated across the whole robot? Well, every time I called that in a command, I would have to do a bunch of manipulations to it. Well, I don't want to do that in a bunch of different places. I want to do that right here in my drive subsystem. So one thing I might want to do is um, add, uh, let's say, a max speed. Okay, and I'm going to do a real quick example on this, and then I'm going to delete it. Uh, it's just uh, so you guys aren't typing this, just pay attention and, and just watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to say, okay, um, I'm in testing mode, right? And I really don't want uh, to test this at full speed. I want the max speed of this robot to only ever be uh, half speed so that I'm not mashing this robot into a desk. So I could say if move is greater than 0.5, move equals 0.5 all right so what would happen when this is called is you'd pass it this move value right uh, and that happens in a command and if you're going all the way up with your robot stick and you're just going i want to go full forward it would give you a value of one which means full forward that one would come through here and then it would say if move is greater than 0.5, which it is because it's one, um, we would say do this right here. And this is all on one line because if you have an if statement and you're only doing one thing, you can keep it on one line. More traditionally, you'll see a pair of curly braces here uh, like that because then you can do whatever you want inside these curly braces. So if move is greater than 0.5, make move equal to 0.5 and that's what it would give it down there. So this would only end up being 0.5. So you can see that doing that inside of a method in my drive subsystem is wonderful because I have to do it in one place. I might call this manual drive method from a bunch of different commands, but it'll always remember that we're doing this math here um, to the move variable. So that's why we do it. Um, and I'm going to delete this because I straight up want to drive full speed. I'm just that kind of person. Okay, now we have done everything we need to do in here. Uh, I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go into the robot.java file. This is the last thing we're going to do in this video. Um, the robot.java file, we don't have to do a whole lot in here, not with a command based uh, robot. Just a couple things. First of all, any subsystem you make, you want to um, you want to instantiate a new version of it in here, and we're going to do that right here. I'm going to say public static um, drive subsystem. That's the name of the class we created over here. If you made a different class name, you're going to want to name it something. You're going to want to call in whatever you named it here. Public static drive subsystem. Oops. Now I name it. I'm going to call it um, drive subsystem equals new drive subsystem and that's it now with dot syntax I can say robot dot drive subsystem dot manual drive and I can make it drive by giving it a move and a turn value and we're going to do that in the next video with a with a command um, that'll be basically our default command and the command that we'll use to drive the robot. Lastly, very lastly, um, I want to do something real quick here just because I'm kind of picky. You'll see that all these variables have this M underscore and I don't really like that. I don't. I think that stands for like member variable or something like that. Meh. I think it's gross. I just don't like that naming convention. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to hit Command F on my Mac to bring my Find Replace tool. I'm going to put that M underscore in there and replace it with nothing. Okay, and I'm going to hit Replace All, and that's gone. It just kind of cleans that up, doesn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Save that. The other thing I want to do is comment out this example subsystem because it's not really being used. If I right click and hit organize imports, cleans this up up here and I save it and we are done. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have anything, any questions, put them down below. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. 
Um, we're, we only have one video left in this series, so if there's something else you want to learn on this super basic level, like gyros or encoders, please let me know. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Boo-doo-doo. -doo.